Hello everyone, my name is Li Zhao and I'm from Tsinghua University. I'll give this talk on behalf of Xin Xiong Chen, Zhi Yuan Liu, and Mao Songsun. All of them are not coming because of the visa rejection. So <laughs> this talk is about a unified model for word sense representation and disaggregation. Uh, word representation is a very hot research topic recently. So it aims at learn a word rep vector representation for each word. Usually the vector representation capturing uh, can capture the semantic and the syntactic meanings of the words. However, for some words, there are more than one sense. For example, the word bank, it has two major senses. One is refers to the river bank, and the other is a financial institution. So we learn only learn one vector for each word. It's problematic. Here is the solution. We can just learn one vector for each sense. Some researchers have proposed some cluster-based models to solve this problem. They mainly conduct word sense by clustering word context. But it is really difficult to determine the number of cluster, uh, clusters key for each word. Uh, so in those methods, they usually just determine one unified key for all words. That means uh, all words in the corpus have the same number of senses. So, how to determine the, uh, sense, the number of the cents for each word? In this paper, the solution is to use large knowledge bases as sense inventory. Um, there are a lot of knowledge bases that are constructed with word senses, such as WordNet and Wikipedia. So in this paper, their goal is to obtain high quality sense vectors based on the sense inventory. To do so, first they learn the initialized word vectors based on the skip gram, which is a popular neutral network based language model. The training object of this model is to learn word vectors that are good at creating its context. Uh, for this example, it's a sentence uh, sit on the bank of the lake, and the given word is bank. We want to use the word bank to predict its context. See, set on the of the lake, the context words. So we use the skip gram model to learn the initialized word vector, and then we want to initialize the sense vector based on the glosses of the senses. For example, for the word bank, there are two senses, and we can see the gloss for each sense. For the first one, the bank that refer to the river bank, and the, those documents are its, uh, it, it, its uh, uh, gloss, and uh, they pick the content words from the gloss. Um, and they only pick those ones with a uh, cosine similarity uh, with the word bank smaller than threshold. You can see that they, put, they, put, they pick that sloping, land, slope, water, port, canal, set, river, washed, and currents. But they, don't, they didn't pick, pick the word bank, right? And that's because the cosine similarity between the bank and itself is too large. So you don't pick it. After you pick all this, uh, content words from its gloss, from the sense gloss, you're just averaging the word vector of all these words, and you get the initialized sense vectors. The same for the, two, the second sense of bank. Okay, now we get the initialized sense vector, but it is not good enough. We want to learn the sense vector from the large data set. 
So we want to collect the um, sense information for each sentence, right? We know the sentence he sat on the bank of the lake. All we see is the word bank. We don't know whether it's a sense one or a sense two. So we want to do word sense disambiguation to get the sense information for the sentence. And we want to know here, the bank here refers to the river bank. So how to do that? They propose two word sense disambiguation method to because in one sentence, there could be more than one word with multiple senses, right? So in this, in this sentence, there are three words, set, bank, and lake. They all have multiple senses. So the left to right strategy just do uh, this emigration from left to right one by one. First set, we can calculate its context vector by averaging the vector, word vector of bank and lake. Now the context is uh, other word, all the word other than set in this sentence, but only bank and lake are content words. So we got context word vector. We want to uh, we want to decide which sense is set in this word in this sentence. So and we compute the cosine similarity between the context vector and each initialized sense vector of sight. Okay, the one with the highest uh, similarity score should be the sense here. But uh, in this case, in this case, uh, the the largest similarity score and the second largest similarity score is really close. It's not easy to decide which sense it is. So we just uh, don't do this emigration here. The second word bank, again, we compute the context vector, and again, compute the cosine similarity, and we found the first sense ranks the highest, so we select it. And the third one, lake, again, we compute the context word vector. Now we know the sense of the bank, right? So instead of word vector, here we use the sense vector of bank to compute the context vector. Again, cosine similarity, and we select uh, the highest similarity score, which is set one. Okay, this is the result. We found that we didn't know what sense the set is here. Here is another algorithm for the word sense this emigration. It's simple to complex. It's very easy. We just think that the word with fewer sense, senses are easier to disambigu it. So we start with the lake, okay? Context vector and cosine similarity and we've got a sense one. And the set and the bank, they both have 10. So randomly pick one. Bank, uh, the context, context sim uh, vector and compute cosine similarity and the first sense. And the last one is set, okay? Here's the result. We saw mm, this uh, algorithm works well. Now we have collected the sense information for each sentences, each sentence. So we can modify the escape gram model slightly, and we want to train. We need to train word vectors that are vectors that are both good at predicting its context word and its contextual word sense. So here. Given the uh, word sense bank one, we want to predict its context, the site on the, of the lake. We also want to know uh, what the word sense is. We want to know the site with its sense one and the lake with its sense one. Okay, here is uh, the learned vector representation for words and signs. And there is the nearest neighbors in the coppers. You can see for bank, the word, we have banks, IDBI, CITI bank, which could both refer to the river bank or to the financial institution, right? And the first sense for, first sense vector representation for bank, its nearest neighbor is river, slope, they are semantically related to the river bank. 
And the second one, um, its nearest neighbor is, oh, sorry, mortgage lending loans. And they're semantically related to the financial institution. So we can see that their model can identify different meanings of the same word. For experiment, Wikipedia is used as a training data. There are roughly 3 million articles and 1 million tokens. And the watch factor is used as a training tool. And the word net is used as a science inventory. They evaluate their model on three tasks. First is domain specific word sense disambiguation. There are choose 41 words from sports and finance, and there are approximately 100 sentences for each word. So we can see that their model achieved the state of art performance. And uh, here, and this one is a random guess. Um, this one is this one is about to uh, choose the most frequent sense, and the KNN is a supervised model. We can see that their model outperforms the supervised model, which supports the finding that uh, on cross-domain task, knowledge-based model usually outperforms supervised models. Sorry, the so personalized PR and degree they imply the word night. Um, to use the semantic relation between words to construct a graph and explore the structure of the graph. Uh, where, where their model just use unlabeled data and uh, knowledge base. Okay. The second task is a course to cross-grain word sense disambiguation. They perform evaluate the model on the same level 2007 um, cross growing our words, um, word sense disambiguation task. There are totally um, five documents from different domains, and uh, there are in total more than 2,000 words and more than 1,000 nouns. So, see the result. Their model achieves comparable performance with the state of art, which is the blue one. And uh, their second, their simple to complex algorithm always outperforms the uh, Left to right algorithm. Um, well, the degree method implies the uh, word net to incorporate uh, high quality human annotated semantic relation between words. Uh, their model just implies unlabeled data and knowledge base. Okay, the second task is contextual word similarity. The Stanford contextual word similarity is used as data set here, and there are more than 2,000 word pairs. Each word has a potential context. So here, uh, the, they compute the Pearson correlation of the model computed similarity scores and human judgment. We can see that mm, their model achieved the best performance, and uh, so it's found that joint training word vector and sense vector um, can improve performance here. Okay, in conclusion, they propose a unified model for word sense representation and this emigration that uses one representation per sense. And the model improves the performance of contextual word similarity and two tasks for word sense this emigration. The model is simple, only requires that scale unlabeled data corpora and a sense inventory. And in future, they will try to incorporate cluster-based methods to find unseen senses. And they will explore, explore the semantic relation between senses, maybe from WordNet. OK, that's all. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, we have a lot of time for questions. Hi, um, well, uh, thank you for the talk. I was wondering, so when you were uh, 
estimating these vectors, right? And you had bank and then bank with uh, some index. Uh, what yeah. I would think that if you just compare the bank, your general vector, and then if you look to some specific uh, census for this vector, and maybe if you sum up the uh, specific census vectors, you should get the, this general vector. Did you see this kind of patterns? It's difficult probably sum up that doesn't work because there is all this um, neural net involved. But it, makes, it would make sense if lake in this example would be a combination of lake one, lake two, and lake three. Oh, Did I, you I think you mean that the word vector should be um, com the combining of the size vector, right? Yes. Oh, I don't think the author did this experiment, but you can look at these examples. I think it shows the, the general bank vector. It uh, can refers to both river bank or financial situation. A situation, I think that's it. But they didn't do the experiment you said. Okay, that's maybe because maybe the financial institution sense is more dominant. Oh, right? maybe. So then, it's like your average vector will be skew closer to the insti financial institutions. Then yeah, to maybe, maybe. Maybe. okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for more questions. Uh, hi. Uh, thanks for a nice talk. My first question is like, uh, I know you are using uh, uh, WordNet for different senses, but I think if you consider in WordNet for one specific word like get or take, there could be twenty or thirty different senses. You think it's that is that reasonable to represent that word with so many different senses? I mean, and if you consider many senses are pretty close to each other, and that yeah, right. But uh, there are some words with um, some sense that are very different from each other, and I think that's why um, the author only select those very representative example. They didn't select something like you say get or take, right? right. And also, I mean, for for the senses that are very close to each other, oh, yeah. your uh, when you compute the cosine similarity, yeah, they're very pretty close. Yeah, and that that's why. Um, wait for a moment. What? In this case, so in this case, uh, you can just calculate cosine similarity between the context and each sense of the vector, each sense vector of the word, okay? And if you got a very close cosine similarity, um, that means the largest one and second largest one is very close, then you don't do the disaggregation. It's hard to decide. Okay, uh, my second question is, when you do the word sense disambiguation, it's like, I mean, uh, some some senses are used much more frequently than the others. But some sense, or the right. Yeah, but when you're doing the word sense disambiguation, I know you. Is that possible to consider these types of information for? Yeah, just wait for a moment, right? Okay. Okay. Um, for but not this one. Right, but I mean, when you're when you're compute the uh, kind of decide the cosine similarity. For word sense disambiguation, you didn't consider the uh, how yeah, frequently these words. It will be normalized. I think it will be normalized. And uh, for what you said, um, this semi supervised method is to we well, can't decide uh, which sense is this this word is. So you just choose the uh, most general use case. To oh. Oh, thanks. More questions. So I have a question about how the model is trained. So okay. um, if you go to the training slide. Um, this is your slide. Right. So, um, so in Skipgram, you create these negative examples automatically, right? So while learning the language model using Skipgram, you get the negative context vectors using some negative sampling method. So I'm wondering how uh, that was done for this task. So um, 
how do you provide supervision to the neural network while training? Yeah, I don't know that for sure. I think, yeah, I think it should be the same way as the original scape gram model. Okay. Uh, just adding some sense information. Uh, okay. That's it. <laughs> so over here for bank, um, the bank is set with the sense point. The sense right. Point. But SAT1 and Lake1 are the positive context information. So yeah. how do you sample the negative information? Do you add some arbitrary sense uh, contexts? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think the, here, for the, for the sense of for SAT, mm -hmm. I think they pick uh, randomly other uh, sense, maybe two or three or four, like that. Okay, okay. So uh, <clears throat> the other question is a very uh, like a naive clarification question. So for all these experimental setups, uh -huh. um, is the sense the sense inventories are different or the same? Sense inventory. Like the labels on these different evaluation data sets. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, they are all the same. They are all the same. All the same. You learn it. You assign the science, and you learn it from the Wikipedia. And you get a vector, uh, word vector, and a sense vector, mm -hmm. and then you test them on all these tasks. Okay. All the word representation and the sense representation is all the same. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. More questions? We still have a couple of minutes left. Yeah. Hi. At the end, you mentioned um, for future work that they're yeah. planning on. Um, Right, exploiting the semantic relations. Yeah, um, semantic relations. Has that been discussed on how you could see doing that? I mean, because the relations can be very complex. Um, yeah, there are some existing methods that uh, take use of the semantic relations. Uh, they just get semantic relation from the word net. Uh, maybe they want to uh, combine their model with the existing semantic relation based model. Yeah, I think that's the mean, what they mean. Okay. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.